coordinate geometry. So look at the first question. The first question says that 3y equals to 4x minus 1 and ky equals to x plus 3 are equations of two straight lines. If the two lines are perpendicular to each other, find k. So you can see the bulky or the bullet point here is what? The lines are perpendicular. So what's the condition for perpendicularity? That's m1, m2 must be equal to what? Minus 1. That means the product of this. So what we need to do is to determine our gradient. And you know, by equation of a line, y equals to mx plus c. So m is what? Is the gradient. So what we need to do is to conform every equation that is given to us to this model so that we can figure out our m. So for the first one, for the first equation one, which is 3y equals to 4x plus minus 1. So the equation of the line has to be of this form and format. You can see that the coefficient of our y here is 1. So here we have 3. So we need to divide through by 3 so that we can have the coefficient of 1 for our y. So what we need to do is divide this by 3, divide this by 3, divide everything by 3. So when you divide this by 3, you have y equals to 4 over 3x minus 1 over 3. So you compare this one with y equals to mx plus c. You score that our m will determine the what? 4 over 3. So our m1 is 4 over 3. Then for the second equation, you have ky equals to x plus 3. So in this situation, too, we we'll try to let it take this format. So if you want to take this format, you need to divide 2 by k. So we have divided by k, ky divided by k, 1 over kx plus 3 over k. So this k can cancel here. Now y equals to 1 over kx plus 3 over k. So y, x, y equals to mx plus c. So what is our, well this time it will be m2. So what's our m2 here? Our m2 will be 1 over k. So our m2 equals to what? 1 over k. In this regard. Then, since we have succeeded in calculating our gradient for the two equations, then by condition of perpendicularity, we know that our m1 times m2 must be equal to what? Minus 1. So what is our m1? 4 over 3. What is our m2? 1 over k must be equal to what? Minus 1. And the question asks us to find k. 4 times 1, 4. 3 times k, 3k equals to what? Minus 1. Then we cross multiply. Let's also cross multiply this. So minus 1 times 3k, that's minus 3k equals to what? 4. Divide both sides by 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. So this one can cancel this. Then we have k to be equals to minus 4 over 3. So our k will then be minus 4 over 3. That's A. Find the value of P. If the line joining P, 4 and 6, minus 2 is perpendicular. So that means you have two lines. Let's say we have a line this way, and we have another one like this. Let's call this A, B, and let's call this C, D. Let's call this line C, D. So now, we are telling you that the line joining, find the value of P. If the line joining P, 4, P, 4, and C, 6, minus 2 is perpendicular. So this line is perpendicular to the line joining 2P. And this so then when, let's say this one is 2 comma p and this point here is minus 1 comma 3 the line cd is perpendicular to that and what was the point here 4 comma 4 uh, p comma 4 and we have 6 let's put it here 6 comma minus 2 now if i'm to calculate the gradient of a b gradient of a b Gradients, which will definitely be, I can say, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So if I'm to, what, where is my a, b? a is 2 comma 4, eh, 2 comma p, that's my a. And my b is what? Minus 1 comma 3. So my, what is my y, y1? This is my y1, this is my x1. This is my y2 is my x2. So I can say gradient of AB gradient of AB will now be y1 
that's P minus Y2, 3, over X1. What's my X1? 2 minus minus 1. That will be P minus 3 over 3. That's my gradient of what? AP. Take note. Gradient of AB multiplied by gradient of CD must be equal to minus 1. For condition for what? This is the condition for what? Perpendicularity. Since CD is perpendicular, since CD is perpendicular to AB, then this condition holds. And meanwhile, we have calculated this. This one has been calculated in the question. Uh, that's AB, which is. So I can put this as P minus 3 over 3 times gradient of CD, which equals what? Minus 1. That means I can make gradient of CD is all a formula. Gradient of CD will definitely be what? Minus 1 over P minus 3 divided by 3. So which will now be gradient of CD will definitely be, this one comes in, so you have minus 3 into what? P minus 3. So that's my gradient of CD. Then the question now says that find the value of P. So that means I'm looking for the value of P. So since I've calculated the gradient of CD, so automatically I can just say gradient of AP. Gradient of AP, that's what? P minus 3 over 3 times what is the gradient of C, uh, what is the gradient of CD? If you look at what you have here, let me calculate the gradient, so I know the gradient of um, AB already. So gradient of CD from here, that will be gradient of CD. That will be, this one is, we have C to be P comma 4, and we have our D to be 6 comma minus 2. So what is this is y1, x1. This is y2, x2. So that's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So what's that? y1. What's my y1? 4 my, minus y2 minus 2 over x1, p minus 6. So this one will be 4 plus 2 over p minus 6. And that will be 6 over P minus 6. So this is the gradient of CD. And we know that gradient of AB times gradient of CD must be equal to minus 1. So now what's gradient of AB? Gradient of AB is calculated as P minus 3 over 3 times gradient of CD. That's 6 over P minus 3, eh, minus 6, sorry. P minus 6 equals to minus 1. Now, let's simplify this. This times this, that will be 6 into P minus 3. Then this one will be 3 into P minus 6 equals to minus 1. That's what I'm going to have. So at this point, let me cross multiply. So if I cross multiply this, I'll have 1 times this, that's C over 6 into P minus 3. And this will be minus 1 times minus 1 times 3. That's minus 3 into P minus 6. This time this 6 times this 6P minus 18 equals to minus 3P plus 18. So I'm looking for my P. What do I need to do? I will collect like times. So I bring this one here. So I have 6P plus 3P equals to 18 plus 18. 6P plus this, that's 9P equals to 36. Then I divide both sides by 9 to get 9p. 9 a 1, 9 a 4. So my p equals to 4. So I go to my option and pick the one that correlates with that. And that is option.
third question is if two graphs, this and this, intersect at x equals to 2, find the value of p in terms of q. That means our final answer will contain q. That's the meaning. So the first graph that we have is y equals to px squared plus q. Since we have them intersecting at when x equals 2, so we say that that means these two graphs are equal at a point where x equals 2. So when x equals 2, I will have y to be equals to p into 2 squared plus q. That will be y equals to what? 2 times 2, 4. 4 p plus q. That's what I'm going to have for my y there. Then the second one, that is y equals to 2x squared minus 1. So when x equals 2, when x equals 2, then I have my y to be equals to 2 into 2 squared minus 1. That will be y equals to what? 2 squared is what? 4. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1. So that will be y equals to 7. And y equals to y. So that means 4p plus q must be equals to what? 7 because they are equal. At least two points. Then I'm looking, I want to make P the solid formula, so I'll transfer this on the other side. I have 4P equals to what? 7 minus Q. And I'll divide both sides by 4. Divide this by 4, divide this by 4. So cancel P will be 7 minus Q equals 4. So that will be the answer. The next question if line, this one is this one is tested 26 cent. If line P equals to 5x plus 3 is parallel to line p equals to wx plus 5. Find the value of w. So in this situation, what is the condition for parallelism? m1 must be equals to what? m2. So let's go to our first line. p equals to 5x plus 3. So this one is already in that format. It's already in the format of the equation of line. So my m here will definitely be what? 5. That's for the first case. Then the second case, I have P equals to Wx plus 5. Then y